So because amines are nucleophilic, uh, one reasonable way to think about making them would be to react an amine with an alkylating agent, basically reacting it with an alkyl halide. Okay, so we might think about taking ammonia, for example, and reacting that with uh, some, some alkyl halide. And um, as long as that alkyl halide would be um, you know, amenable to doing SN2 chemistry, uh, we should then expect that we could get to this primary amine. Okay, so we would get to a primary amine by alkylating ammonia. And in fact, that, that actually works really well. Amines are really nicely nucleophilic and, and that uh, certainly will typically happen. Um, and then if we were to uh, think about taking a primary amine like this and react it with a, another alkyl halide, well, then in that case, we could uh, think about getting to a secondary amine. Okay, so we get to a secondary amine and that also works really well. Uh, really quickly. Um, and then if we were to think about taking a secondary amine and reacting it with another alkyl halide, uh, of course, then we're going to get to um, a tertiary amine. Tertiary amine. Okay. Um, and then one final one, if we took our tertiary amine and reacted it with yet yet another um, alkylating reagent, uh, then what we would get to is in fact a quaternary ammonium. So I guess, all right, so there's, there's our quaternary ammonium. So we might call this a quaternary ammonium salt, okay? so. Actually, all of these reactions, um, they go, they actually go pretty well in terms of, of kinetics. The problem here is one that's, that's very significant. Uh, and it's the fact that as you add an alkyl group to a nitrogen, you're increasing that nitrogen's electron density, right? This is the same thing where with an aromatic. As we added an alkyl group, um, we increase its electron density and we make it more prone to react again. The same thing goes with amines. So what that means is that a primary amine is more reactive than ammonia, a secondary amine is more reactive than a primary, so on and so forth. What that means practically speaking is that if you try to alkylate an amine, you're not going to be able to stop and you're, you're basically going to over alkylate before you alkylate all of your uh, starting amine. Okay, so if I wanted to just, I'll just give you an example. If I wanted to take um, methylamine and I wanted to react it with benzyl bromide, okay, um, I, I would be hoping to get to this compound here. But that's really not what I'm going to get because before I can, I can stop it, um, it's uh, going to react twice. Okay, because this is more reactive than that was. And once I'm here, um, and at some point sterics takes over, but to a degree at least, I would expect that you're actually going to get some of the, of the compound where you've quaternized as well, because this is more reactive than that. Okay, so at the end of the day, trying to alkylate amines directly is a big disaster and you pretty much can't do it um, with any kind of selectivity. And there are some cases where you can, um, and, and you know, so we don't want to overgeneralize, but for the most part, this isn't a good way to make amines. I will just point out, if you have a tertiary amine, um, it can only alkylate once more. So forming a quaternary ammonium by alkylation is, is obviously just fine. That's going to be selective because it can't do anything else. Um, but for the most part, making amines by alkylation uh, is not a good strategy. So we need to do something different. Um, and fortunately, there are other alternatives. Okay, what we need though is a surrogate for the amine um, that, that isn't going to be overly reactive. So the first one that we'll talk about here is what's called the azide synthesis. Okay, and so what we're going to do here is actually use azide or N3 minus uh, anion um, as a surrogate for our amine. Okay, so this is going to serve as a surrogate, um, surrogate for ammonia. Okay, 
So it's it's not ammonia, but it's that's basically what we're going to get out at the end of the day is as if we had used ammonia. So the way that this works is if we have a uh, an alkyl halide, and again, this has to be amenable to SN2 chemistry, so um, the same rules that we've seen before, what we can do is react this with sodium azide. And now the azide anion is three nitrogens in a row. Okay, and if you, you sort of draw out uh, formal charges, you, you end up getting um, anionic charge at both ends and then a cation in the middle. Um, so it looks a little bit funny. Uh, those are just formal charges, of course. Overall, the whole thing just has a single, um, you know, single anion um, uh, overall. Okay, so azide is going to do an SN2 on that alkyl halide, and that's going to then give us the, the alkyl azide, okay, there. Um, and then what we can do is treat this with, um, with lithium aluminum hydride, strong reducing conditions and that will reduce the azide all the way down to the primary amine, okay? So you can see here that this now, in these two steps, it, it gives us the product that looks as if like we had used ammonia to alkylate, um, that, uh, or to be alkylated by that alkyl halide, okay? Um, but this is very selective because the azide can't be alkylated more than once, so that's why it's selective, okay? Um, so what is, what is the, um, the nature of this of this reaction well in terms of the the actual substitution i mean this is just a a simple sn2 reaction here sn2 um, and then the reduction we we should talk about just very briefly so once we get to the alkyl azide um, this is the structure that we're dealing with so positive on the nitrogen and negative on the on the the, the terminal one okay um, so, of course, this is a neutral compound now. The anion is here. This is the neutral compound that's been alkylated. And if we add a hydride equivalent to this, what's going to happen is you're going to add the hydride to that nitrogen to push um, the electrons onto that, that middle nitrogen, okay? And so when you do that, now you've got NH there, and you will have... All right, so we just have a minus charge there, okay? Um, and notice what we've got. We're sort of, um, we have the, the potential again, as we've seen before, to, to form uh, N2, that very, very stable gas, right? So, um, and we've got an anion that's just, just dying to make that happen. So this uh, lone pair is going to dump in to, to complete that N2 uh, molecule and in order to accomplish that, it's going to uh, cleave that NN bond, dump that onto to that nitrogen. So we're going to get to an N minus here, and then off goes our, our N2 gas, right? All happy and, and stable. Um, and so you get to this compound, and then when you work that up with, with proton, that's when you can get to your primary amine, okay? So that's the lithium aluminum hydride reduction of an azide. And that's all well and good, but the problem is, as we've seen before, lithium aluminum hydride is really, really strong. And so it's not going to be compatible with many uh, functionalities in, in most molecules. And so there's an alternative reduction of azides um, that, that turns out to be very useful. This is called the Staudinger reduction. Okay, And what this involves is we take um, that same azid compound and we can actually treat it with um, triphenylphosphine, um, which uh, gives us an intermediate uh, that looks like this. So N double bond and then triphenylphosphine, okay? Um, and then, so this will sit around um, as long as you let it, um, but if it sees water, any amount of water, um, you're, you're actually going to uh, hydrolyze that to the amine and then you're going to get tri, triphenyl phosphine oxide, okay, the same byproduct that we saw in the Wittig reaction, okay? So this is an extremely mild um, reaction, uh, very, very simple. It's going to be compatible with almost all functionality um, with very few exceptions. And how does this work? Okay, well, we've got our alkyl azid, okay, so the same, same situation here. And in this case, our nucleophile, instead of being hydride, is going to be the triphenylphosphine. So it's actually a pretty good nucleophile. So we do that same sort of initial addition. 
Okay, so now we have this, this type of compound, okay? And we've got a phosphonium because this was neutral before it added. And now we've got the minus on the, the nitrogen up there. Um, and this is actually bent. I've drawn it linear, but it's actually bent. And so what's going to happen is it's sort of just like the Wittig, where this can now close down to form this type of intermediate. Okay. Yeah, four four membered ring. Again, just like we saw in the Wittig reaction. And now if this is able to do um, that uh, that sort of retro two plus two kind of thing, um, there we can actually form um, the uh, the N2 gas. Okay, so we're going to get to pH three, right? And there we will would have just formed the the N2 gas. Okay, so we're just forming it in a different way. So this is now that intermediate. And then the hydrolysis is really just the same as a um, the hydrolysis of an imine. So the the reduction part happens with the triphenylphosphine. So we've we've uh, we've reduced at this point, um, and then we just need to hydrolyze. Okay, so that's the Staudinger reduction. And there's one more uh, alternative to getting to amines by alkylation, um, and this is what's known as the Gabriel amine synthesis. Gabriel amine synthesis. Okay, so what we're going to do here is use a different surrogate for our ammonium piece. Okay, so instead of using azide, we're going to use this um, this anion. Okay, which is called thalamid. Okay, so you usually have it as a potassium salt, so it'd be potassium thalamid. Okay. Um, and this is going to be nucleophilic at nitrogen, but it's not going to be able to um, alkylate more than once. So we can use that to do SN2 chemistry. So if we treat it with an alkyl halide, that N minus can just do an SN2 reaction. Okay. And then we're basically going to get an N substituted thalamid. Okay. Um, and then all we have to do in this case is to cleave off this whole uh, phthalic acid piece. And so there's there's several ways we can do that. We can either do KOH, which is just going to, to hydrolyze, um, or another another way that's actually pretty effective is if we do uh, hydrazine. So N2H4 will actually cleave that off. And then what we get out at the end of the day here is our, again, our primary amine piece um, that again, looks like we used ammonia um, in the alkylation step. And then as the byproduct, we're going to get to um, phthalic acid. Okay, so that's phthalic acid, phthalic acid, thalamid. You can see the relationship. Um, or in the hydrazine case where there's actually going to be hydrazine involved here. Um, that, that's not that important. Okay, so uh, azide um, synthesis or the Gabriel amine synthesis gives us access to, um, to uh, you know, the, the products as if we had used ammonia um, to do the alkylation. And then your question might be, well, what if I want a secondary or a tertiary amine? And your best bet, to be honest, is to actually use um, primary amines then uh, to do reductive amination. So um, you can take these and then use a carbonyl component, do the reductive amination, and then you can get to those higher order amines.